And this is Marquis' story. Gilles is in the space. Hughes is coming up on his right. Hughes is away. They won't catch him, will they? No! Hughes is over. He was the heart and soul of the Knights. Mark Hughes was highly respected and a much loved part of the city's rugby league team for almost a decade. He even won two premierships before retiring in 2005. Oh, Mark Hughes has scored a double. One of the Newcastle veterans. One of the nicest blokes you've been in the NRL. Run. Okay, ready? He married Kira Lee and they had three beautiful children. Chase Life Chase was good for Chase the former Chase Origin Chase. and Test star Chase. until two days of headaches turned into scans, oh, which Chase. revealed Mark had either suffered a stroke or was living with a brain tumour. All, all indications were that if it was a brain tumour, it was going to be a lower grade, which is obviously better. But I think as, as we went along, the news just kept on getting worse and worse. And yeah, he was a high grade tumour and yeah, it's just neither of us really expected or had hope for that. Tell us about the moment that you were told it was that high-grade tumour. Yeah, it was just uh, like the world's come crashing down on you. You know, there's just uh, just panic and um, certainly uh, a little bit of soul searching. So here we are, Hunter Stadium, a very special place for you, I'd imagine. Does it feel like only yesterday you were running out of here playing for the night? Yeah, it does. Uh, Great memories. Um, Mark was just 20 when he made his debut for the Knights and it didn't take long for fans and his teammates to fall in love with this unlikely league star. He was in good company too. Newcastle boasted some of the best players in the competition and despite a fair few years passing since he last ran out onto Hunter Stadium, it's still a very familiar feeling. What was it like when you first started? You were fairly young coming in to play in a team with so many guys that have gone on to be legends of the game. Yeah, it was. Yeah, I was only 20, and this might be a bit of a shock to uh, football fans, but I didn't touch a weight till I was about 19, <laughs> and uh, that's why I was probably a little bit smaller Never than I was. Yeah, I know, a bit of a bit of a shock. So I didn't. I just turned up, started playing, and all of a sudden in first grade, yeah quite fragile, um, but sort of managed to go along. I'm surrounded by these fantastic players. I just, I improved and I just um, ended up having a, a, you know, a great, enjoyable career. I look back now, it's like a, a bit of a dream uh, to play in front of this crowd and to, to play for the Knights. Uh, very proud to do that and certainly something that, um, yeah, I just, I'll never forget. Nine years after his last game in the NRL, at 36 years old, Mark Hughes was diagnosed with brain cancer. He had a stage three tumour. For Mark and Kira Lee, their first priority was their three beautiful children and how to tell them this devastating news. How did you tell the kids? The little ones sort of, you know, they, don't, they didn't really understand, but Zach, he, it was hard for him and we sort of did have to tell him that, you know, Dad possibly wouldn't live to an older age. Right. Zach was diagnosed with Rolandic epilepsy uh, in February. It was really hard to tell Zach, okay, you've, you've got epilepsy and also bang, you know, your dad's dealing with a tumour and the night that I explained to him about Mark, and he's never done it before, he had quite a few seizures through the night. So it obviously, it affected him. That was, yeah, that was... Yeah, explaining to him was the hardest thing I think I've ever had to do. Mm. You have some pretty down times and, you know, probably the worst I can recall was um, on one of the walks I had, I was sort of thinking that it would be a good idea to um, make some videos for the kids' birthdays. Now, that's, that's not very healthy to be thinking about um, milestone birthdays, making sure that 
they had a video and they're things that I was thinking about and um, but I, I quickly knew that that kind of stuff wasn't going to help anyone and I needed to like pull my head in and, and get myself sorted out and I did that really quickly. Kelly, what scares you the most? What makes you the most upset about all of this? I really don't focus on that. I just. Um, you know, I'm really positive and strong, so I'm not. I'm not really scared of anything at all. Um, you know, I've got the skinny arms and the curly hair, but there's a street fighter under this body, and uh, you know, I'm ready for whatever gets thrown at me. And. You know, we've had the answers so far and we'll get some answers through medicine and research and um, put all that together and we'll find be fine. Cure. Yeah, find a cure. Mark underwent a life-threatening operation to remove the tumour, but it didn't end there. In fact, he was far from done. 33 radiation sessions followed, plus six months of chemo. Today, for the first time since surgery, He's back at the hospital where it all began. So, so walking back in here, the smell, the sights, the yeah. sounds, does it all come back to you? How does it make you yeah, feel? Yeah, it just, it's a surreal, like it was a blurry dream a little bit. Um, I was even a little confused as to what door we went in, so it, maybe the whole time here was a bit of a blur for me. So, yeah, certainly a surreal place to be. As I said, mixed emotions, like I'm so grateful for the, for the care that I had, these nurses and doctors. You know, they're a good, they're a great team. You know, I played in the Knights, they're a great team, but sorry, I think they're better, so. Yeah. And what did you have done here? What, what treat, what surgery? Okay, so I had to have the uh, full cut in the back of the head and had to get the tumour removed. The next couple of days after that, I had a few issues. Um, I was getting hallucinations and uh, there was all cartoon type things happening around me. So my, my brain was readjusting to being blown back out. Uh, I was talking to Kira Lee and her lovely curls in her hair, it just went and I was watching it go. Just a, a whole chunk of her hair went. The, the, the mind and the brain is such a strong, robust thing and, you know, it's bouncing back now. So, um, you know, of course, they've got the mates that said they were surprised there was ever a brain there. <laughs> I think that's poor Joey taste. one of them. Yeah, no, who was it? He's a Coalfields boy and we sort of stick together out that way. So. <laughs> but, um, oh yeah, no. Nah, it's, 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 a, it's a surreal feeling being back here. In typical Mark Hughes style, the former Night Star found a positive out of an otherwise horrific situation. The Mark Hughes Foundation was launched to raise money for research into a cure for brain cancer. Well, uh, now it's time uh, to get the great man up to answer a few questions about the foundation and the future. Please make him welcome, Mark Hughes. And his friends and family were by his side just as they have been for the past 10 months. And for these four former teammates who share an especially close bond, being together again was a chance to reflect on what's been a year full of highs and lows. Okay, Mark, I'll, uh, I'll start with you. These three blokes sitting over here to your right, what do they mean to you? The best thing I can say about them all is they're, they're better mates than they were footballers, so that gives you an idea. What was your reaction, first of all, when you were told what was happening? Well, I, I was probably in shock, it was disbelief. I just couldn't believe it. And Boozy is one of those characters, it's a bit like Peter Pan, you think he's never going to grow old. <laughs> and uh, you, know, you hear stories about. That's you, Joe. You know, different people. <laughs> sorry, that is me. <laughs> about, uh, about, you know, different people being struck down with, with cancer and that, but you never think it's going to happen to one of your mates, especially Boozy, who's, who's young and fit. Everyone was terrified, really. And it felt like the only strong one was Booze. <laughs> he was the one holding all together. The family, I think, as well, having Cure Lee and, and the kids was at the front of my mind and, and uh, my family's mind. But to be there in any way which Mark needed us, that was the other thing. So I'm always going to be there. I just want to make the point to say, if you ever needed anything, that would be there no matter what. You feel so lucky to play with really great blokes. You know, when you're playing footy, um, you know, it's good. But when you're playing with good mates and then you know 10 years 20 years down the track you know you look in the eyes you've got that same old feeling 
That is a beautiful thing about sport and rugby league. So to play footy with him, you know, I'd rather play with him than, than anyone. And the boys would say the same, you know, it brings the best out of me. So where this thing ends, we don't know, but he's going to give it a great crack. There's something about the bond that you guys have. It's just, how do you explain it? I don't know how to explain it. It is living your dream because you're with all your best mates and you're playing and you're together and you're training and you're having fun. And you look back now, it's, it's some of the best times of your life. That's the big thing you take out of footy, isn't it? The, the friendships you've made the last forever. How much did their support mean to you during the past 10, 11 months? Ah, it meant the world. I remember having breakfast with Chief one morning early in the piece and he sort of looked me in the eyes and said, you know, you're, you're going to create history. And I sort of had a big think about it. And through this foundation, one day I hope to be remembered as uh, you know, just someone that, you know, the Mark Hughes Foundation that also played for the Knights. And through these people's help, uh, we'll be able to do that. Mark has now finished all his treatment and has been given the all clear for now. But there are no guarantees the cancer won't return. But he and his family won't live in fear. They're determined to stay positive and are grateful for all they have and this second chance at life altogether. Yeah, we just feel really blessed. We are blessed. We've got three beautiful children and Mark's really healthy. Um, yeah. He's going really well. Yeah, we're, we've had a rough 12 months, but beautiful family, live in a great place, great, great family, great friends. So, yeah, we certainly every day count our blessings. What do you want people at home to get out of this experience, what you've gone through? We're all dealt different cards. Life's not fair a lot of the times, but you just got to make the best of what, what cards you're dealt. And I've been dealt some good cards and I'm, I'm extremely grateful for where I'm at now and where I'm going to be in five years, ten years, you know, I'm, I'm grateful. So be grateful for what you got because uh, sometimes you think you're building for a future but Maybe it's now that you should be living for.